Once upon a time, there was a king. He had a woman with beautiful hair. There wasn't any woman that was not even half as beautiful as, sh as she. One day, this queen became very ill, and when she felt that death was about to bring, pick her up, she called her husband. Dear lover, I'm departing soon from you, but I have one last wish. If you were ever to marry again, then your wife should have just as golden hair and should be just as beautiful as I am. Oh, my beloved, I promise with anything that's holy to me, but please don't leave me. Shortly after, the queen dies, and the king is sad and is in remorse, and he doesn't even think about ever marrying again. But one day, there, his counselors come to him with a wish. Dear honorable king, we can't continue like this. The people, it's getting restless. They want to have a queen. Because, after all, what's a kingdom without a queen? Okay, send out messengers. In the whole country and the neighboring countries, they should find a woman with golden hair that is just as beautiful as my late spouse. One messenger comes back without having found anyone. There is not just anyone that's not even half as beautiful than the deceased queen or had golden hair like her. Now, it came to pass that the king had a daughter who was very similar to his deceased wife. And when she becomes a woman, he falls in love with her. I found the solution of all my problems. I will marry my daughter, because she is the only one that I can fulfill the promise that I gave to my wife. Well, Mr. King, uh, God forbid it. That's not possible. Uh, the father cannot marry his daughter. A connection like that, nothing good come for us. Uh, you'll bring unhappiness and unfortune for the whole kingdom and people. But I love her and I want her and I want to marry her. I will marry her. The daughter is scared when she hear, hears about the wish of her father. But, but I'm, I'm, I don't want to sin before God and I don't want to bring unfortune over my people. What shall I do? to gain some time and to bring away his father, her father from his sinful thoughts. She thinks about two wishes as a bride, which she thinks he could never fulfill. Father, dear, I wish two things, and then I can become your bride. A dress made of silver like the light of moon and a coat with all kind of... Uh, fur, where, where of every animal in the whole kingdom will give a piece of its fur. But the daughter had underestimated her father. He loved the girl so much that he soon had those two gifts ready. Darling, look, my darling beloved daughter, here, my heart, I lay it at your feet, and the two gifts that you have asked me, and tomorrow, we shall have our wedding. The girl was still afraid and decided to flee. In the evening she colored her face and hair dark with soot, put a coat on with all these furs and disguised her body and her hair. And then she only took the dress of silver moonlight and the golden ring of seals that her father once had given her, and she put it in the deep pockets of the coat and walked out of the castle. She wandered into the woods until she got tired. She laid down into a hollow tree and fell asleep. In the morning, the hunters of her father woke her up. Who is that? What kind of strange animal is that? Let us kill it and take it along. Have mercy. I'm only a, a little child. 
deserted by mother and father, please have mercy. And the hunters had mercy, they took the girl into the castle, and so the daughter of the queen, unrecognized, got back into the home of her father. Now she served for a long time in the kitchen and did all the difficult menial works and lived on, to, on a blanket behind the stove. The father was in remorse again. Now he had lost his daughter. He became very, very, very sad. And finally, his counselors wanted to make a big feast to change his mind and get him into a different state of mind. And then Alalai Rao should never take off the coat was made of all these skins and it was just sweeping up the ashes in front of the stove. Oh, how much I would love to just become beautiful once again and be who I really am in real. And Alalai Rao couldn't resist that wish. So in the evening she washed her face and hands and put the beautiful dress of silver moonlight and went to the feast. Nobody recognized the queen's daughter, not even the king, but he fell in love again in his, into his wonderful daughter, who was now so much more beautiful than ever before because she had become a mature woman. He danced the whole night only with her. And to stay recognized, the daughter of the king fl fled again, once upon it, once again. And when he couldn't find his beautiful dancer, the king frustratedly decided to retreat. Servants, bring me a sweet soup of bread for comfort, and then I want to go to sleep. Alalara was in the kitchen again, meanwhile, and heard about it. The cook was tired of all the cooking. Alalai Rao, come here, right away. You cook the, the soup for the king. I'm tired. And just quickly she colored her face and hands and put her coat onto above and covered the silver dress. So she went ahead and boiling and cooking the soup. Then she did something which was never explained to us. She took the ring of seals and dropped it into the soup. The king was very surprised when last spoon of soup he found something hard between his teeth. What is this? A ring? A golden ring? That's the seal ring of my daughter. Who cooked the soup? Bring the cook here right away. When the cook was supposed to come before the king, he was afraid and brought Alalai Rao along with him. Dear king, it was this rough animal, and he pulled her to the front, and her coat fell off her shoulders, and there she was. That's my beautiful dancer. Oh no! The dress, I recognize it, and the coat, it's my beloved daughter. Father and daughter hugged, fell around each other's neck, and were never parted. And now finally they get married and live happily until the end of their lives.